This takes you to step nine, which is where you set the appearance of your map. Um, you can choose the colors and how you want the colors to display. Now, if you'll notice, when we move from step eight to step nine, um, and we chose four classes, you can see the result here. We have four different classes of data, and the, the values for the first class range from 4.2 to 10.4. Each of the classes has a slightly different number of observations, um, and they range from a dark red for the first class up to a light red for the top class. So in order to reverse the gradient and go from light to dark rather than dark to light, we need to edit our colors. So click on the first color and it will take us to step 9B. There's a button that says flip and if we click that button we'll reverse the color gradient. Instead of going from dark to light it will now go from light to dark. So click on that button and observe the result and if you want to set that as your new color gradient, click on the set button. Now you can observe the result. The colors have been reversed and they now go from light to dark, which makes a little bit more sense since the observations go from small to large. Now if you click on the continue button, you'll get a message that appears asking where you would like to save your file and actually it chooses an, a default output directory for you. It says keep KML output directory as and it lists out um, where it will put it in the maps folder inside the measure E2G folder inside the work folder on the D drive. This is fine. We'll say yes and the next dialog box will show us that same path and it will show us the name that's been generated automatically for our file and it's important to remember this name and this path because you'll be able to use this KML file to give to other people and they can view it in their copy of Google Earth. You'll be able to email it and print it and use it in other documents. Click OK to view your file in Google Earth. The initializing window will open. It takes a little while to launch the Google Earth application. The Google Earth window will open and begin centering on your map. It will zoom in and you will see the map that you have created. Now let's make some more room for our places window by clicking on the triangular toggle at the top of the search window. We can turn off our administrative unit boundary labels by unchecking the place marks box. We can then zoom in for a closer look by clicking on the plus button in the upper right hand corner and we can pan around the map by clicking and dragging using the hand grabber. I'll demonstrate that here. Now let's turn the place marks back on by clicking in the small square box next to the word place marks. And you can see that you can expand this list by clicking on the little plus sign just to the left of this box. Once the list is expanded, you can click on the name of each location and a label will appear on the map directing you to the location of this administrative area. I'll click on Addis Ababa and you can see the value in the list as well as on the map. Now I will click close and I'll click back on the plus sign to close the place marks list. Alternatively, we can click on an individual place mark on the map to see its value. Let's try that now. You may also view the more detailed variable description which you typed in earlier by clicking on the title of your map, in this case, percent %A98 by admin2. So let's click on that and we will see a box. And in the middle of the box it says percentage of children receiving aid from Feed the Hungry Babies in 1998. This type of information can be useful to people using your map that do not understand your perhaps shorter variable name that you used in column two. We can click the close box and then I can also show you that you can save your map for later viewing and exporting 
by going up to the file menu and selecting save and then save to my places. This will move your file from the temporary places folder where it has opened in Google Map into the my places folder where it's available later for viewing. The next time you open Google Earth, the My Places folder will contain the map that you have saved to that location. Now I'm just going to straighten up our map and give you a big congratulations. You have successfully classed, mapped, and viewed your data in Google Earth. Thanks for taking the time to view the tutorial. We hope it's been useful to you. Again, if you need to contact us with any questions, we have our email address included right here for you. Your comments will aid us in developing future versions of the tutorial, and we love to hear comments back. Thank you for contacting us, and good luck!